without a trigger, single trigger. Getting a whiff. That's the old whiff. Ouch. Today on Commander Replay, we take another look at Winota built for battle and see if opponents can stop our snowball from rolling down the hill. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some Winota Joiner of Forces today. And today's deck list comes to us from Patreon supporter Jared. Let's take a look at this opener. Oh man, if it had like one more land, I'd probably keep it. Loyal Apprentice is really good. But... I'm worried about the land, so I think I'm going to mulligan. Eh, that one's worse. That one is worse. Mulligan again! Well, we're probably keeping this one. Oh, we got this thing. This helps. Yeah, okay. I think we can work with that. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep this one. Who do we need to put back? Fiend Hunter we can pull out pretty easily with the Winota ability. So yeah, I think we just put Fiend Hunter back in the deck. Even though it is a card that I like a lot. So the filming of this deck has been on the back burner for a little while. Uh, Winota is very strong for the meta that we've been playing on the channel of late. And, uh, like, I mean, it's almost sort of in a class of its own where, like, this isn't a CDH build, but it's not that far away from CDH either. Like, to me, like, there's high power and then there's high power. And Winota is in the latter, I think, where it's, you know, where it's in, like, the upper tier of high power. It's just very fast, very consistent, does a lot. Uh, so even against other strong commanders, it does make it just like challenging to get a balanced game with Winota. So anyway, brings it back to our turn. There's a, uh, Ornithopter of Paradise. Sweet. I do like that one. Play the Erd Mesa, crack it, get a plateau, play the mom. Uh, this is a card that I added. I did have to change about five cards in the deck because there was a bunch of stuff that wasn't available on Magic Online yet. Uh, also, Ragavan, still very expensive just out of my price range. Um, I think this went in for the Ragavan slot just to have another one drop. Ponder for opponent. So they were going with a Risky Keep, I think, so Ponder should help with the Risky Keep, in theory, anyway. I might try to get the Archivist in... Let's see. Yeah, we don't have a non-human. Uh, this is a non-human. Yeah, I think I want to get the Archivist in before people start, like, dropping fetches and cracking fetches and stuff like that. I think that's a really good play. Uh, Jorkadine is not one you want to draw in this deck. This is one that you want to get with the Winota ability, so that is that is a thing. Uh, play the Carekeep, play the Archivist, and we'll hope that we can get uh, an activation with it, or a trigger with it, rather. Uh, yeah, I'm not going anywhere with the mom. It's uh, much better on protection, just keeping our stuff alive. There's a soul ring. Ooh, didn't hit that second land, though. Yeah, that is the risky keep. Going the old pray for lands mode. Ooh, we got the stained glass. Yeah, those are pretty. Those are pretty. I gotta get some of those. I don't have any of those. They look real nice, though. Here comes Lelia. Yep. Uh, over to DJ. Yep, there's the Lelia trigger. Uh, and they've got a Burgie. Cool card. Uh, I've actually been using the backside of it a little bit in my Ashling deck. Now, you can also use the front side. I found that, and, and Ashling, Ashling doesn't cast a lot of spells. Typically, it's kind of like one spell per turn, so the backside tends to be a little bit better for that deck. But for a lot of decks, Birchie is very good. Cool card. Uh, there's a Zariel. We're going to read that in a minute. I don't remember what that one does. But let's get the Ornithopter of Paradise in. I know we're kind of like going the slow way about some of this here, but we didn't hit the land anyway, so I guess we wouldn't have been able to cast one out of one way or the other. Uh, we can do some attacking, though. Sean looks like he's open. He can take a poke for two. So, Winota is a commander that I haven't actually played in a while, considering that I have the deck built in paper to a more or less CDH level. I haven't updated it in, like, a year and a half at least, probably two years at this point. So it's a little out of date in that sense, but, I mean, I did spend, like, a lot to get it going. The only thing it's really missing is the, like, very expensive moxes. But I just kind of lost my taste for CEDH, so I haven't been playing it, and I mean also with the pandemic and like the shop near me has just reopened for Commander. Mothership Games, by the way, who uh, does sponsor the channel. Uh, you guys see that little promo that runs at the beginning there. Uh, they have finally opened back up for events, so I'm probably going to start checking some of that stuff out. In that case, I might need to dust off my Winota deck just because uh, I don't know what it's like now, but you know, there are a lot of very high power spiky players. They used to play there like it wasn't quite cedh it was like maybe a turn or two slower but with like a lot of counter spells type of stuff that was going on like very consistent turn six type decks with counter spells was uh sort of the meta that was going on there tier two cedh if you will i guess uh that's a hammer of design coming in for Lelia. yeah that's the old free equip and now it's indestructible uh we may have to swords that at some point 
Uh, there's a Captain Landry Storm. Yeah, that's the most awkward part about Lelia is that you tend to, like, unless you're hitting free drops off the top, that first turn or two with Lelia is very awkward because you're exiling a card that you probably can't cast. And I think that's actually a reason that you might want to run some three mana rocks in the deck. I think it's a place where like Worn Power Stone makes a lot of sense because you can cast a Worn Power Stone on three and then on your following turn, you'll have some extra mana and potentially can cast Lelia and the thing that you exile. There's that fourth land that we need, or I guess third land, but we have the Ornithopter. So that puts us on one Oda mana. I do like that. Let's get this snowball rolling down the hill, although we got some open mana that we have to... Well, it's in play now, so we got past the counter spells. With Mother, we should be in pretty good shape to at least get something going here. So we'll attack with the Archivist into DJ. And there's a single Winota trigger. Get this snowball rolling. Oh, yep, yeah, Ranger Captain of Eos is a good one. That is a very good one. We'll send that one into Sherry. We'll get an ETB trigger. And what do we want for a one-drop? Uh, Rograk was one that I added to the deck, which I do actually think is a very solid card for the deck. Just being free and non-human with an evasion mechanic on it, super helpful. Uh, Esper Sentinel, card draw does seem good. I think I'm in the, I think I'm in the mood for Esper Sentinel. Now, what is interesting about Winota, like outside of CEDH, uh, now I haven't played a lot of CEDH and I, I have seen that I think people are starting to main deck more creature board wipes in CEDH now because there are some really strong creature decks, but in... In non-CEDH high power commander, I do think that you're going to run into more board wipes than you probably would in a CEDH game, uh, which means that, you know, Winota is a little soft to board wipes. Now, it can rebuild, but you have to make sure your mana's on point, like ours really isn't. If Winota dies for some reason here, we're going to be in a world of hurt. So, you know, that's kind of the thing with this deck, and like I, and like I said, I haven't played it much lately. Uh, to really kind of balance out all those little nuances of like, you know, making sure that you have enough protection for the meta that you play in or the type of protection that you need because, you know, interacting with board wipes is very different than interacting with like blue counter spells and blue bounce and stuff like that. That's a Leon and Shikari for opponent. Let's give this thing a read. Forgot to give, forgot to do that during our turn. Uh, four mana, four loyalty, planeswalker, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain haste. Zero, make a devil with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. Uh, six, an emblem with extra combats. That seems pretty good. Okay. That is something to think about. I mean, Sean probably almost has to come in our direction at this. Yeah. Yeah, here it comes. So we can block with the Winota and soak up some of that damage. Uh, we do risk. Yeah, we do. So if we do that, I think we wait. Uh, he's got a Jessica's will. I think I'm going to wait, to be completely honest with you. Because I think this turn's going to get a lot bigger now. Um, that is a shot for seven. Yeah, I think we'll take this, and we're probably just going to have to swords it next turn. Uh, sadly, we do not have the Esper Sentinel in for all the stuff that's probably about to happen right here. Yeah, there's the Jessica's will. Targeting DJ with seven. Yeah, he's been stuck on lands. Should be a pretty good turn. Oh, I hope it's not an extra combat. Extra combat would be bad. Uh, Mirog is very strong. Grenzo. Uh, they have a land in exile. I hope they haven't played a land yet. Or I hope they've already played their land. Bag of Holding. Okay, not getting pounded by Mirog this turn. Love it. Uh, that's an Archon of Ameria. Yeah, those are helpful. Are we on Arch Archon of Ameria? No, probably not just yet. Because we have our own Jessica's Will that we want to cast. We're going to do the same thing that Sean did. We'll do it before combat here. Uh, we'll use the Ornithopter and leave up the Plateau just because Ornithopter is much more fragile. Uh, what do we get? There's some lands which we badly need. Uh, yeah, get the Bloodstained Mire. Cast Pia and Kieran. Make the one ones. Uh, Archon. Uh, you know what? It probably does make sense to get that Archon now. So let's crack the Bloodstained Mire. Get Sacred Foundry. Ooh, we can't get it. I want it because I want to get Esper Sentinel too. Hmm. Maybe we have to wait a turn on the Archon. Uh, I'm going to give up on the Esper Sentinel for this turn and just get the Archon. I'm thinking about the things that we lose to, and what we lose to is Sean casting a bunch of spells. Uh, this one, that's a human. I think we actually only, I think we're only gonna get one trigger right here. Yeah, we'll just spread these out like that. Winota a trigger, single trigger. Getting a whiff! That's the old whiff! Ouch. Uh, as long as we can survive till next turn, next turn should be a lot better. We have the Archon, we have these two Thopters, so that's four triggers right there. Uh, Archon is definitely a backbreaker for, like, DJ. Because at some point, well, maybe not. You know, if he finds... There's a land for him. Ooh, does come and tap. Well, that does hurt. Uh, you know, if he had, like, a Cultivate or something like that. Actually, <laughs> Cascade is a cast, right? So Archon is really bad for DJ. There's an Oriok Windwalker. There's one you don't see much of. 
Attach target equipment you control to a creature you control. Uh, so opponent has both of the ways that you can move equipments at instant speed. I think there's one more, maybe two more. There is Brass Squire, which is a creature that has essentially this ability. And uh, the red instant that attaches an equipment to a creature you control. Not a lot of ways to move equipment at instant speed, but it can be fun. I've, I've done some weird things with blocks, like in uh, Sisse Legendary Blades. In older versions of the deck, I did have Brass Squire in there and just move a Sword of Cauldra to a creature that's blocking something else and uh, watch the other creature die and get exiled. It's a good time. Um, what I did forget to do is Path the Lelia. Well, he's already got this attack. Let's just see where things go here. Uh, he does have the la- mm, Do we- We should probably exile the Morag. Lelia is definitely scary, but Morag is also scary too, and we only have- one piece of removal. Oh god, I don't have an end combat. Okay, there's some Grenzo triggers. Uh, yeah, Grenzo's a magic card. DJ's down to 13. He's kind of going to be out of this game before he ever really got into it. Two lands and six turns is uh, not where you want to be. We are going to Swords the Mirog, though. Because he drops that land in in the second main phase and then does it all again and, like, casts a bunch more spells. And... Although, I guess Archon does shut off some nonsense, but... We might just be on Jorkadine. Jorkadine will make our stuff big. Sean's at 45, which, like, I'm not going to be able to kill him quickly. There's a Rashmi. We can actually get some pretty decent mana out of Nykthos this turn. Uh, Sean's going to activate Bag of Holding. Yeah, I think he already played a spell this turn, so might as well do that. Really good card in that deck. Haven't really talked about what our opponents are playing today. First up is DJ Wars piloting Amodi Celebrant of Bounty. Uh, played that one on the channel once a long time ago. It is very strong. Uh, he just happens to be mana screwed this game, so hasn't been able to get much going. Uh, in the middle, we've got Sherry piloting Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale, one that we've also played on the channel a whole bunch. They're having, like, uh, they're just having a slower start than everyone else is at the moment. Like, if they dropped a board wipe or someone dropped a board wipe, they could probably get in it from where they are, but uh, they're just a little bit slow up to this point, which is always sort of the the drawback to Sir Gwyn. It is just a little slow. Uh, and then Sean's got his Lelia deck, as we've seen, and is uh, definitely a formidable threat out on the table. Oh, that's a combat celebrant. So this is one that I added in the slots of cards that weren't available on Magic Online. I do think if you want to run an infinite combo in Winota, from what I've seen and what I've heard, more so what I've heard because I haven't been playing much Winota, I think Combat Celebrant Rionia is probably one of your best bets for an infinite in Winota. Uh, some of the other infinites, like Aura Touch Mage, which I saw is in the deck, um, there's just a lot of weird timing that goes on with those combos, like getting both pieces at the right time in the right order is a big thing. With Combat Celebrant and Rionia, it doesn't really matter when each one comes into play as long as they're both in play. So I think that might be the premier combo for this deck. Again, I haven't seen it much myself, but I think that's where we're at now from what I've seen on Twitter and stuff like that. Anyway, we're going to get this Jorkadine into play. Just seems like really good damage, so let's uh, go ahead and do that. We, You know what? We might be able to... We don't have any instants or anything, so... Yeah, we'll add uh, a white and a... Uh... No, we're not going to have enough red to do all this. Sad. I was thinking we could also activate Cure Keep. Get another non-human, but uh, we're not going to have the red mana for it, so what can you do? Gotten zero triggers off this thing so far, which is pretty disappointing. We do have Metalcraft. Everything is huge. Do need to be careful about Sean. Who are we blocking with? Uh, this is a pretty good blocker. This one can go into Sean. I don't know that we have lethal on anyone. Uh, I think we'll just take DJ out. Kind of put him out of his misery. Hasn't had a great game. I'm going to leave just a couple things back here just in case Sean pulls a rabbit out of the hat. There's three Winota triggers. Well, we would have got one more trigger with that. Whoops. I do love how good this card is in this deck. Well, there's the Rionia. Uh, well, we know what we're doing next turn. Cast the Rionia. Send it in over here. Oh, we should have cast this. It's not going to have haste. Wait, no. The Rionia copies will give it haste. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, oh, that probably makes things really lethal. Let's get this Angrith Marauders. Yeah, we'll send that one to the Sean. Uh, this is one that I don't run in CEDH, but I don't mind it for a setting like this. Because you're... You just don't want to ever have to cast this card. But, you know, when it comes down, like, right now is the time for it. That's a Palace Jailer. Yep. This is also really good. Uh, this is going to be pretty brutal. Does the game just end? I did not anticipate for the double damage. Uh, had I known that was coming, could have made that better attacks for sure. Probably killed the table. Tough to say. Sean Scoops. This is probably just about game. Sherry might survive. Sherry drops a board wipe. It will actually take us a while to rebuild. Uh, yeah, uh, DJ goes down, Sean's gone, and that just leaves Sherry. Board wiper bust. Do they have it? We draw a card at the end step. Love it. 
and he does not have a board wipe. So, yeah, that's the game. Uh, I don't think there was any removal this game, and like there just there has to be removal against Winota. That's just a thing that has to happen. Now it's tricky because of the Mother of Ruins. Uh, kind of gets rid of a lot of spot removal. Really means that it needs to be a board wipe, and probably not a red board wipe. Um, although. The red board wipe would still get rid of everything else, right? Like, it would get rid of the mom, and then once that's down, you wait a turn, and then you can shoot Winota, and, you know, then we're in a bad spot. So, yeah, I mean, the key to Winota is interacting with Winota. Trying to race Winota is going to be a losing proposition most of the time. Um, As far as this deck list, it's looking pretty tight to me. Uh, I did cut the Mana Crypt also. We haven't been playing Mana Crypt on the channel, but... Yeah, this list is looking pretty good. I think the one major update to make is the... If you're really looking to push the power, the Combat Celebrant and Rionia combo. And I may even cut the Aura Touch Mage combo and Breath of Fury. Just because it, like, there's a lot of awkward timing in that combo. And it's not the easiest thing to get going. So it sort of depends on like the success rate you have with that combo in your meta. Right, If you're playing full CEDH, it can be pretty tough to get that one off, especially with interaction and stuff. If you're playing like just a touch slower like we were today, it might make sense, right? It sort of just depends. But it, personally, if it were me, I would probably cut this combo in favor of the Rionia combo. And I'm not sure if there's other things that combo with Rionia. I'd have to look. But I imagine there's got to be like other extra combat creatures that probably do it too. So I might look to kind of double down on that uh, sort of thing. But otherwise, creature balance felt good. We were a little light on lands. Our Kaomancer's map still not available in Magic Online, which is one that can kind of help your lands out a lot. But yeah, it played really well. And I mean, this is what the deck looks like when there's no removal. Basically, you just do everything, right? That's what the deck does. So uh, now when removal happens, a lot of times you'll do nothing because, you know, getting your mana on point with Winota going down can be kind of rough. So... Uh, that's a thing, but yeah, overall, I think this deck list is in a very good spot. Uh, like I said, check out this Rionia combo, and other than that, I think that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel, vote on which decks I play next, or if you want to get some good games on Spell Table, be sure to check out my Patreon at the link below.